Um, my name by introduction is Gola Titus Gufon, teaching social studies and civic education with the uh, NKMS Nigerian Korean Model uh, School Jazz section. Uh, I'm going to give a brief uh, talk on development of multimedia based supplementary teaching material. Uh, development of multimedia based supplementary teaching materials good this is my topic and uh, by definition I would like to first start by a little introduction. Uh, many countries today are increasing their investments in education and educational technology to support the transformation of teaching and learning. However, this transformation, this strategy is not given due attention by most countries, especially developing countries to enhance development and availability of instructional resources or materials that makes the investments in hardware economically useful and educationally meaningful. Uh, aiming at equipping our school institutions with radios, televisions, and computers, uh, connecting them to the internet services which can enhance uh, effective teaching and learning. Uh, there are a lot of advantages, there are a lot of importance of the use of uh, multimedia-based uh, teaching materials. Uh, one, it enhances learning in different locations and improved quality of education if they are used. It also presents opportunities for students working at different rates and levels. There is reinforcement of skills, ideas and learning. It also fosters teachers' development, initiative and improvement in teachers' working conditions. When such is used, you discover that uh, teachers are improved, teachers are developed, and their presentation and teachings will be effective. Now, what is the meaning of multimedia supplementary teaching materials? This refers to tools used by a teacher to enhance effective teaching and learning in our schools. The use of these tools in the teaching of social studies and all other subjects can enrich teaching, engage students in multidimensional learning, and it builds students' abilities to apply knowledge acquired. Now, what are these learning and teaching uh, materials? Learning and teaching materials are concrete they are concrete and tangible vehicles for supporting students' learning. Um, these materials can be touched, it can be seen, and then I'm going to look at some of the examples of the teaching materials that are very useful in our supplementary teaching materials. Teaching materials can add details, background, or context to an article or a topic by providing, for instance, multimedia supplementary objects as audio clips, we have audio clips, uh, pictures, and then a spreadsheet, software applications, like a, a screen share, you can use your, 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 your phone, your, and then uh, be able to reach out to the students. And supplementary teaching materials for classroom instruction in the teaching of social studies includes uh, any tool used to foster and enhance or enhance uh, uh, teachers made resources uh, like textbooks we have uh, textbooks they are traditional resources workbook we have graphic uh, organizers and then teacher made resources others includes games sometimes we make use of songs that students can handle uh, to help them gain and practice facility in with knowledge furthermore the teaching of social studies can en be enhanced using the following materials such as 
the chalkboard. The chalkboard, like what I'm using at the moment, uh, is, 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 is supplementary multimedia uh, material. Diagrams, we have whiteboards, we have models, graphs, charts, and then the maps, uh, pictures. We have cartoons. Sometimes we make use of slides or films, film trips. We can go on a film trip, you can visit, you know, and then on excursions, radio and televisions. All these are uh, multimedia uh, materials that can be substituted. And supplementary instructional uh, teachings, materials in summary, are tools used in instructional activities, which includes active learning and assessment. This encompasses all materials and physical means an instructor might use to implement uh, instruction and facilitate students' achievement of uh, objectives. Now, what are the criteria for selection of instructional materials? What are the criteria? Instructional materials should, one, uh, be selected based on appropriate uh, age. As appropriate for age, emotional and social development and ability level of the student for whom the materials are selected. So when instructional materials are chosen, consider the age, consider the level of understanding. Also, materials should be diverse with respect to levels of difficulty, reader appeal. When the reader reads and they looks at it, it is appealing so that the students will be able to handle it well and should present a variety of points of view. So you should be diverse in coming up with this multimedia supplementary material so that all the slow and the fast learners should be able to get everything right. Now we have some of the examples. I will give a summary of the examples of supplementary teaching materials used, you know, not only in social studies but in other subjects. We have what we call hands-on manipulatives and realia. This connects abstract concepts with concrete experiences and students' own lives. Let me give an example. If you are teaching a topic on uh, ritual killing, for example, in social studies, and uh, you are able to print out a picture of ritual killers who have just killed an innocent person, uh, you know, it, it gives, it, it, it explains the meaning of ritual killing. It brings out the concrete ex explanation to the students and they will see the reality of it. That's what it means. And then pictures, we have pictures, photos, and visuals. You show pictures, you show photos, and then you visualize it. Sometimes you play video clips of uh, these instructional materials. This provides support for harder uh, concepts. And then the third uh, uh, one is multimedia. This includes films. You use films, videos, songs, chants, posters, computer games, and then related concepts to solidify concepts into students' deep memory. You are doing this so that the memory will remain for long in the lives of the students. And the other one is demonstrations. This means model step-by-step -step completion of tax or a model language to use with presentation, scaffolds, and then it enhances learning. The other one that is very key also is related materials like level books, uh, both fiction and non-fiction, that, that supplements the theme of what is being taught. You can get books, you can get uh, f uh, fictions, uh, books that uh, are fictions or non-fictions, and it will help the student. For example, text, it involves books, magazines, journals, uh, newspapers, paper presentations by some uh, educational experts. Then images, images uh, uh, consist of printed photos, maps, uh, schematic drawings, digital photos, and then audio involves radio, audio tape, sometimes CD based, and then video analog broadcast, and then simulations interacting web, and then that requires a uh, robot PC and high speed internet connection. When there is an internet connection in a school system, it makes it easier for a teacher to be able to access all these 
uh, multimedia supplementary materials I am trying to talk about. Sometimes animations are used, songs and dramatization is also used. I would like to outline some few um, uh, aspects of uh, uh, supplementary teaching materials used in my area, which is social study, study, studies. The teaching of social studies, we use materials such as traditional resources like textbooks, workbooks, journals, articles, newspapers, and dictionary. We also use maps. The maps should be national and global. When you have national maps that talks about Nigeria and then international maps that talks about other countries. And internet printed educational materials, we make use of them. Histograms about historic uh, cal events. Then the Nigerian constitution, very important when we are discussing especially teaching civic education on the issue of human rights, fundamental human rights of uh, citizens. Then we have radio recorder and video clips, costumes of diverse cultural attire of major tribes. We have three major tribes in Nigeria, the House of uh, Fulani and then Yoruba and uh, the Igbo. Um, we make use of the different attires uh, during teaching topics like uh, culture and some other related topics. Nigerian flat, and then the models, graphs, charts, pictures, diagrams, cartoons, Film trips, I talked about that. Television and then projector. Computer and then research papers. Sometimes we also make use of uh, road safety guidelines. And then um, before I say something about uh, relating it to my subject area, which is uh, like an example of a lesson plan to be able to see how this is supposed to be taught and then the materials are supposed to be raised. Uh, I would like to say that the use of multimedia, uh, supplementary instructional materials in this 21st century cannot be overemphasized. Instructional materials availability and uh, effective utilization by teachers will certainly enhance teaching and learning. The, to overcome this, we need to promote technological development and improvement in our schools today. That will help uh, economic life of the people. So I now set a case study or a lesson plan on the application of the topic. Uh, I, make, I make a choice of a topic, uh, common social problems in Nigeria. Common social problems in Nigeria. And in common social problems in Nigeria, we have series of common social problems in Nigeria that is affecting the development and education of our people. Uh, some of these common social problems involves examination malpractices, cultism, uh, HIV AIDS, kidnapping, drug abuse, and then poverty. Others are human trafficking, prostitution, ritual killings, area boy syndrome, political killings, election riggings, juvenile crimes, divorce, and then corruption. All these are very key in causing setback to our nation. Therefore, in teaching this, uh, pictures are printed, videos are prepared, and then present this uh, to, to the students. And then uh, I will show uh, maybe poverty. Yes, poverty is another serious uh, social problem we have. Uh, corruption, lack of parental care, uh, peer group influence, uh, influence of the mass media proliferation of arms and ammunition, which is a very serious problem we are facing in Nigeria today. That's why we are having hitings by Boko Haram here and there. Uh, the militants are down there in the south, and then we have the the herds, the herders who are carrying arms at the moment. And then all these things are real social problems that when you teach them and you show the students. Uh, practicals, uh, pictures, they will be able to visualize and see. I'm going to take these few moments to show some of the examples of uh, uh, the pictures. This is, this is murder. You can see this young lady is, is murdered by someone. It's an example of murder. And then you see, I will give you, this is drug abuse. Drug abuse. 
People take indiscriminate drugs and then cause a lot of problems to themselves. And human trafficking. And then others that I would like to show is, look at, this is, um, this is ritual killing. They've killed this guy and then they've removed uh, maybe his, uh, his kidneys uh, to do some rituals with it. And this is rape. This young lady here is, uh, you see poverty. Poverty and cultism. You can see cultism is one of our problems. The biggest challenge we're having today in most of our developing countries is uh, prostitution because uh, I see young ladies and then suicide. Uh, I last just some few weeks, I discovered that within 12 weeks, within 12 to 13 weeks in Nigeria, over 80 young people committed suicide. That's alarming. That's a very serious problem. So we have a problem of suicide and uh, religious crisis. And then you see carrying guns and sticks and burning religious uh, places. And then the, you can see another mother here, this young man, uh, for whatsoever reason, that led to his death. Uh, it's only them that knows, but there are serious problems that we are faced with. Now, um, uh, you can relate this uh, topic with... Uh, 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 climate change, when we talked about uh, climate change in relation to uh, the teaching of social studies and uh, uh, civic education, yeah, climate change is a statistical distribution of weather patterns. When change lasts for an extended period of time, climate change and its studies is important in our nation, national uh, nations because it plays a role in the formation of natural ecosystem and the human economies and civilizations on which they are based. Uh, uh, studies have shown that human activities since industrial revolution uh, started to manifest in fossil fuel consumption for power generation, land de deforestation for agriculture and urbanization. We're having that problem in the north because of the Boko Haram hitting here and there. People are running away and they don't uh, plant trees again and you see uh, deforestation setting in and it's creating a lot of problems for the economic and social development of Nigeria. It has contributed to an increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere per, uh, by as much as 40% from about 280 parts per million in the pre-industrial period to 402 per million in, 200, in 2016, which has turned into global warming. These changes are imminent in the atmosphere, oceans, and then sea ice, in addition to some extensive changes in the climate cycle over the 20th century. Several parts of the world have already experienced the warming of coastal uh, waters, high temperatures, a marked change in rainfall patterns, and an increase in intensity, intensified, and frequency of storms. We can see a lot of storms causing a lot of problems, and then uh, cities are taken away by hurricanes and all these kind of dangerous uh, storms. And then rising sea levels and temperatures are expected to be increasing trend as we continue. These irreversible climate and environmental changes, including continued melting of polar ice layers, such as those found in Greenland and West Antarctica uh, could cause harmful uh, fluctuations in ocean currents and increasing methane emissions. There is a probability of a greater danger ahead if we, if we do not take um, uh, a step to solve this problem and then the failure of doing this it's going to really create a lot of problems for us. The failure to address this climate uh, uh, change will inevitably undermine both the world's economic and social stability. There's therefore an intergovernmental panel call to bring about a marked reduction in global greenhouse gas emissions and for the adoption of the measures to respond to its effects of climate change. There are some few uh, effects of climate change, which is flooding of uh, coastal uh, cities and islands, loss of wars, 
uh, glacial water towers, marine life extinction, demise of capitalism, the splintering of nation states, drought, and unprecedented damage to uh, our infrastructure. Now, how can we handle that? How can we handle that? In uh, civic education, civic education, in the teaching of civic education, it helps us uh, to study about the rights and duties of citizens and how government works. It is the study of science and the privileges and obligations. Civic education educates uh, citizens within a given political or, eth or ethical tradition. It is a subject that focuses on people, government, and governance. It is aimed at correcting the ills of the society and in conquest norms and values, skills, and right attitudes for effective management of our society. It deals with all the processes that affect people's uh, beliefs, commitments, uh, capabilities, and actions as members of a community. Trans uh, uh, transmission of norms and values to enhance peaceful uh, living and development. It also in, enhances uh, government, democracy, you know, and all these are very important. So for us to correct all this, there should be good governance. And when we talk of good governance, it is an approach to government uh, that is committed to creating a system founded on justice and peace. I want to conclude by saying that in good governance, um, there are some characteristics which involves one, participation, two, rule of law, we have transparency, three, responsiveness, consensus oriented, equity and inclusiveness. We have also effectiveness and transparency. And then lastly, we have accountability. I would like to uh, uh, conclude by saying that all these will address the problems, social problems that we have. So when we are able to get instructional materials, uh, supplementary teaching materials that will help enhance teaching, it will really help us so to, to, to grow economically, grow socially, and grow in every aspect of life. Thank you very much.